Welcome everybody to the first Clean Lakes 101 Science Cafe of the Year. I'm Bob Weber of First Weber, and we are proud to be a co-presenting sponsor of these talks. And also presenting Clean Lakes 101 with us is Johnson Financial Group. So welcome Johnson Financial Group. And additionally, I'd like to recognize the hosting sponsor, the Edgewater. And hopefully next year, we all, I think, agree we could get back to sometime this coming year into live meetings uh, there at the Edgewater. So we look forward to that when things are safe. And supporting sponsor, we also would like to uh, acknowledge National Guardian Life Insurance Company. Thank you for that. And production partners, the UW Nelson Institute for Environmental Studies and the UW Extension. Um, you may have noticed that we've also rebranded these talks. We used to be known as Yahara Lakes 101 Science Cafe, where now we are Clean Lakes 101 Science Cafe. Just a little bit simpler, a little easier to say. Um, thanks to our uh, new partnership with the UW Extension, these talks won't just focus on our local Yahara Lakes, but they'll look uh, at best practices and tap into watershed experts from around Wisconsin. So to bring a broader breadth of uh, things that we uh, can do and resonate with and do to improve our watershed. We're excited to bring uh, a new slate of speakers this year and hopefully increase everybody's knowledge of how to maintain a healthy watershed. Today, we're looking to take a look back at some of the community accomplish accomplishments in our watershed while also looking ahead to see what Clean Lakes Alliance has in store for this coming year. We'll also recognize individuals who have been doing volunteer mentoring of our Clean Lakes for the past five years and announce the winners of the 2020 Community Awards. Before we get to that, I'd like to introduce Clean Lakes Alliance board member and our new state senator, Kelda Royce, for a little more about Clean Lakes Alliance. Kelda. Thank you so much, Bob. Uh, welcome to everyone joining us this morning. I've been involved with the Clean Lakes Alliance for the last four years, and I just wanted to provide a quick overview of the organization. I love the vision of Clean Lakes Alliance. It says that we see a future where the lakes are the center of the community. And as an organization, we bring people together like you with shared interests and values and serve as a catalyst for positive change, not just policy change, but a real cultural shift to center the lakes um, in our community. Technically, it's not Clean Lakes Alliance's job to physically clean up the lakes ourselves, but it is our job to make sure that cleaning up our lakes is everyone's priority. We achieve our work through partnerships with governments, public groups, businesses, and individuals. And the organization is led by a diverse community board of about 50 people. Um, speaking of that board, we have some wonderful new members um, from business, government, and the community at large. Uh, but of course, having new board members means that we have to say goodbye to some of our wonderful outgoing board members. I'd like to thank all of our outgoing board members for everything that they have done to help our lakes. One person I'd like to recognize is someone I have great affection for is Matt Frank. Uh, Matt was Governor Jim Doyle's secretary of the Department of Natural Resources, and he was instrumental in constructing Yahara Clean, which was the initial roadmap towards improving the water quality in the Yahara watershed. Matt has served as our board chair for the past two years and has really helped the organization accomplish some amazing things. Uh, while his tenure as our board chair is ending, we're excited that he is staying on the board uh, in an emeritus role. So I'd like to welcome my friend, Matt Frank, to take a brief look at what we've accomplished together, especially in this difficult year. Well, thank you, Kelda. Uh, appreciate those kind words. Uh, great to have you with us this morning. Um, it's, it's really been an honor to uh, serve as Clean Lakes Alliance board chair for the past two years. Uh, we've had a lot of success, uh, even in the most difficult pandemic uh, altered year of 2020. Last year, we weren't able to hold uh, our large events like our community breakfast, but we still engage people through virtual events like Loop the Lake. Uh, we weren't able to have our usual number of volunteer days, but we were able to work with some smaller groups uh, while still maintaining mask and social distancing guidelines. And even though we weren't able to have in-person meetings, we were able to advance the Ahara Clean Compact, which is a coalition of 19 partners and collaborators working on an updated roadmap with a budget and timeline on the exact steps we need to clean up the lakes. 
Uh, working through the pandemic, the group is still on pace to complete this roadmap by the end of this year. And when finished, the compact's attainable goals will create a better future for our lakes. Uh, we had other accomplishments this past year, so many I could talk about. One in particular I mentioned is our Resilient Landscape Initiative, uh, working with a host of uh, new partners and some, some existing partners on new efforts to um, engage the community, uh, to give people a way to do something uh, at their own home, to help collectively improve uh, water quality in our watershed. As I mentioned, as we all know, 2020 was a challenging year. I, I just wanna thank uh, all of our supporters uh, for sticking with us. Our roots run deep in the community and uh, it was so gratifying to see um, while people were dealing with so many of their own issues to continue to care about the lakes and support our work. I wanted to also uh, recognize uh, James Ty's leadership uh, over, particularly over the past year uh, and our great staff. Um, I don't think we would have made it through this past year without the Jim's, James' leadership and, our, and the extraordinary efforts of our staff, and I wanna thank them. Um, also uh, recognize our incoming board chair, Jim Gallegos. Jim's been very involved with the organization as we've kind of sorted through this last year. I know we'll do a great uh, job as board chair. And uh, also join with Kelda in thanking our community board, our executive board members, um, Again, uh, extraordinary effort this past year. Um, looking, I'm looking forward to a great uh, 2021 for the organization. Uh, we are moving ahead and uh, I'm confident that we'll, uh, we will continue to make progress in uh, cleaning up our lakes. So with that, um, I wanna take the opportunity to uh, introduce our Clean Lakes Alliance founder and our executive director, uh, James Ty. James. Thank you very much, Matt. Um, you know, I think it's, it's a privilege to have such a wonderful board, staff and donors to help with our, our cause. And Matt, you know, especially to you for these last two years in helping us gather all those 19 organizations uh, meeting with the Secretary of DNR, meeting with the Secretary of DATCAP, and many other things. Uh, you've been a driving force. Uh, you were the first Secretary back in 2008 to sign the first Your Higher Clean Compact. Uh, clean Lakes Alliance then uh, brought those people back together in 2012 uh, 12 and did the second compact and now we're on to the third with a, a more breadth than ever. So. Matt, your leadership, your intuition, and your passion for the lakes will ever leave a mark on the organization. Uh, you sort of talked about also resilient landscapes. Um, I think during this time, people realized how important our natural spaces are, going outside and walking all the time. But even more important than that is our lakeforecast.org app. It's one of the great assets to our community it's very unique combining state, local, and individuals uh, near time data around 70 points around all five lakes, Memorial Day through Labor Day. They are our feet on the ground. It's great to have them here. These pots are tested twice weekly by volunteers using a turbidity tube, a thermometer, and their own visual uh, observations. Even the pandemic, they were out there with their masks, loading things up, as you can see with the iPad on the left, to our app and instantly going out to everybody. Really um, exciting to have that going on. Uh, we wanted to, to recognize especially a group of people who have made it to five years of doing this uh, and recognizing those people. And their names on the monitor, Kitty, Ada, Arlene and Jeff, Tim, Terry Joe, and Alan. We really like the special thought for these people for hitting the five-year mark and really providing that grassroots efforts. Um, their time and dedication is just wonderful um, and providing the data throughout the summer. Next, we'd like to recognize a group of individuals who went above and beyond to make these lakes a center of our community this year. 
Joining me today, this year's Community Awards is Johnson Financial Group Executive Vice President and a new Clean Lakes Alliance Executive Board Member, Courtney Seals. Good morning, Courtney. Good morning. I, I know, so Courtney and I uh, both moved into new houses in the last few years. She is on one side of the Hilldale area and I'm on the other. So we can banter about which places are best for takeout um, from Hilldale because the, the drive is so quick. And so I think we're both feel very special to be in the Madison area and uh, close to so many wonderful lakes and lake parks. I don't know about you, Courtney, but I, I, I do a walk every day when the sun's out. I, I get out when I can out of my home office. <laughs> exactly. Before we like to get to this year's awards, I want to recognize all of our past award winners who are on the slide next to me. As you can see, there are a wide breadth of people, businesses, and organizations throughout our Yahara watershed. And, and they are providing that foundational backbone to our organization by being past award winners. Our first award winner this morning is our new Lake Partner. Lake Partners are businesses, quote unquote, business membership that join us. This business actually came into the Clean Lakes Alliance office uh, this past year when we could actually do that. And that, that was sort of like a thing. You could actually walk into somebody's office and say, hello, well, we can't do that anymore. But they really came in and asked, how could they get involved? Since then, they've been active on social media, promoting our cause, as well as doing a percentage of their sales from their products back to our organization. They're a relatively new business in our area, which also shows their passion, right? Like right off the bat, you open up your business and what are you gonna do? You're gonna donate back to the community. That, that's a beautiful thing. Um, they're, an, uh, they're an environmental organization and they're certified organic grower and they're truly a leader in our community. Uh, and thank you very much from us from, you know, that those small donations make a big difference. And I'd like to congratulate Honeybee Cannabis for being our new Lake Partner of the Year. You know, Courtney, I think that, you know, this shows we're a, a small little business right off the back to becoming a member. And that's the whole idea that all we all come together, businesses, large and small, people from the east side, west side, rural, urban, we can all can come together. We can really move the dial and, and create a bigger community cause. I don't know about you, but but honeybee cannabis, I haven't tried it yet, but I do like honey. It's same. That's awesome. Excuse me while I take a drink of my coffee. Oh, so nice, so warm. How do you get this? Sign up to become a monthly donor and we'll send a mug right to your home. Mmm. Our next award is one of two Lake Leadership Awards. This is a really cool award. This young girl who just turned 14 years old two weeks ago loves to make stickers. For the last two years, she's created a sticker from art she made and sold it to benefit Clean Lakes Alliance. Um, over those two years, her sticker sales benefiting Clean Lakes Alliance have raised $293.38. If you have not yet visited ElizaMakesArt.com, again, ElizaMakesArt.com, head on over there after this morning's presentation and buy one of her Madison Skyline stickers, which helps to benefit our lakes. Um, they're very cool, and there's a few different options depending on what your style is. I am very happy to announce the winner of the Lake Leadership Individual Award is Liza Gettner from Eliza Makes Art. Congratulations, Eliza, and keep up your awesome work. It's so cute. I wish I was that smart when I was at her age. All I did is put a, a lemonade stand out on my street, but I lived, basically lived on a street that nobody drove down. So I ended up drinking all the lemonade myself. <laughs> I was not as entrepreneurial back then, but I, I think I've made up it over time. Yes. Did you sell and anything when you were a kid, Courtney? Um, hmm. Maybe candy bars for uh, various sports organizations I was in. So you, you got the charity thing going on early. <laughs> um, our next Lake Leadership Award is for a business or organization. It's not really fair to refer our next worker as an organization, 
but rather like a force in the greater Manhattan world and the world for that matter, with multiple departments working towards sustainability efforts, including improving lakes. This institution is forever forward in its environmental approach. Can you guess who it is, Courtney? That was a that was a clue. Forever forward. Hmm. Specifically with clean lakes, this institution is a large player in the Yahar Clean Compact. Those 19 organizations that are coming up with the next plan for the lakes to, to beat back climate change. Is engineering students working on capstone projects, which is sponsored by C.G. Schmidt. And also uh, those projects over the next couple of years could really impact the lake. Specifically, additionally, this institution has partnered with Clean Lakes Alliance on educational programming, helped host volunteer days, Friday study stream of, of quality interns. We've got a couple of interns working for us right now and a fellow as well as a host of other things, the list goes on and on and on. I'm pleased to recognize the University of Wisconsin-Madison as this year's winner of our Lake Leadership Organization Award. The, the sad thing about this whole thing going on, Courtney, is we can't like give the award to people. We can't even like, they're all so busy on other Zooms. We can't even like, oh, here, Chancellor, here's your award. Um, but hopefully we'll, we'll get back to normal soon. Agreed. Um, Courtney, I, I took some classes at UW, but I did not go to UW-Madison. Uh, you might have gone to a sister school, right? I did, uh, UW-Whitewater. Mm -hmm. So, you know, go University of Wisconsin. Yes. Our next award is for Volunteer of the, of the Year. If you have read a Clean Lakes Alliance e-newsletter, email, um, or been on social media, chances are you have probably seen his work. A retired health and safety professional, this person channels his passion for photography into fantastic drone photos from all around our watershed. Additionally, he is a volunteer water quality monitor who not only enjoys testing the water, but also providing important photography of any cyanobacteria blooms he sees to Clean Lakes Alliance. I am very happy to award our Volunteer of the Year to Robert Bertera. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Bob. You know, it's pretty cool. Um, here at the Clean Lakes Alliance, he sends us, you know, weekly or a couple times a week or every other week, some beautiful drone shots still photography, the one here, the thing that I like about this picture, it shows Madison with the two lakes, the ice is starting to form, and, and look at the brilliant colors of all the buildings. Madison truly is a, a special place because of the lakes. Um, so we are really awesome appreciate it, Bob, and, and, and congratulations uh, on the award. Yep, and thank you for all of your efforts, volunteer efforts, mind you. Next, one of our two projects of the year. First, our urban project of the year. If you've driven along Monona Drive on Lake Monona's northeast side, you've probably seen this piece of property known as the San Damiano Friary. The 10 acre parcel was once owned um, or owned for years by St. Norbert Abbey. What could have been turned into a residential development ended up being sold to preserve green space and control runoff to Lake Monona. I'm very happy to announce the City of Monona, the Urban Project of the Year Award for its purchase of San Damiano. These are clapping, everybody. So really, you know, uh, all the person, Nancy Moore, Andrew from Francis Dam the uh, Mayor Mary O'Connor. Um, it's through that grassroots leadership and then being supported by the city of Minota that, that really made that happen. I know they, they did a lot of work over a period of time. We were fortunate to do a, a tour of the property also. Um, but it's, it's sort of a little hidden gem, uh, Courtney. I know you and I, uh, every once in a while, are get out onto the lake. I've been over there, but I've not. I used it sort of as like a nice beachfront too, but looking forward to maybe doing that this summer. How about you? Absolutely. And I just cannot wait to get out on the lakes. 
Yeah, well, I'm looking out, I'm here at the Clinton Lakes Alliance. And so to my right is Lake Mendota and there are fishermen out there. I don't think I'm ready to go out on Lake Mendota, but maybe by this weekend with some cold weather. Um, yeah. So if, Safety if, you first. Have, if you don't have a boat, great time to get on the lakes was when they're frozen. Um, next up is our rural project of the year. This group is responsible for a project that been, uh, been, and has been a longtime partner of the Clean Lakes Alliance. It is that grassroots effort, uh, building people together and setting a vision for this area. Uh, this group also helps maintain this area and prove the, the important piece of land as important to the lakes and hikers and natural explorers, especially right now. I've been out to this area and it's beautiful and uh, it's really appreciated this time of year. Recently, Dane County purchased 160 acre farm adjacent to the north of Fresno Branch Conservancy. And this group has successful in raising money through its Seed the Need campaign to plant native plants on this new land and return it to a native prairie. They've raised over $25,000, wow. which is then matched by a Clean Lakes Alliance $25,000 grant through Alliant Energy. But I'm really happy that they were able to do this, this grassroots effort. I am happy to award the Rural Project of the Year to our friends, the Friends of Fresno Branch Conservancy. And I know a lot of them are on this call today, Lloyd, Hans, Pam, Lois, Gary, and the, all the friends for, for doing this. Hi, everybody, nice seeing you. And congratulations on a, a momentous day of, of topping off that See the Need program. Uh, also, Lloyd, who is on there, is a past also chair of Clean Lakes Alliance, a longtime leader inside the Department of Natural Resources, and she lives uh, just off the, uh, the Conservancy also. So thank you, Lloyd. We have one more award to give, and this one's really close to our heart. For years, this individual worked with the Department of Natural Resources, actually building the handbook on how to develop and use rain gardens to help the lakes. He also worked with his counterparts at the DNR to get phosphorus credits for leaf control in place statewide, which laid the groundwork for leaf street programs. So basically the idea is that he came up with the measurements and, 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 and the work so that if you remove leaves, the, the state would give the city a credit for doing that work through a permitting process. So a, a real momentous thing that he was able to do. Finally, he was an instrumental member of the Clean Lakes Alliance Community Board, helping organize and advance initiatives that make our lives better. Unfortunately, we lost Roger to cancer a few months ago. I'm still proud to posthumously recognize him with our Founders Award. I believe his wife is on this call today. I want to thank you to all of our winners, what they do for our lakes, including Roger. And now to like look forward to what we hope to do this year, I'd like to introduce our new board chair, executive vice president, general counsel, <laughs> secretary Alliant, at Alliant Energy, Jim Gallegos. Good morning, Jim. Good morning, James. Uh, and thank you very much for that introduction. Um, I'm looking forward to leading of the uh, community board starting this month because there are great things ahead for Clean Lakes Alliance and the community as a whole. You've heard us talk about the AHARA Clean Compact, but what does that mean and how can the community get involved? The compact is laying out the future roadmap for achieve achieving clean lakes. For years, our organization has followed the AHARA Clean Strategic Action Plan for Phosphorus Reduction which is a, clean, a lake cleanup implementation strategy that was released in 2012 that called for 14 actions that we as a community can take to cut phosphorus from entering the lakes and to double the number of clean water days. The compact uses that framework but brings all stakeholders back to the table to account for inflation, new technologies and opportunities and a changing climate. The compact recently selected Smith Group to help complete needed updates, which means we are about ready to hear from you. In late spring of this year, 
Clean Lakes Alliance, in partnership with the Yahara Clean Compact, will begin a robust community engagement effort. And this will give you an opportunity to have your voice heard through a variety of ways, including an online survey. So we do encourage you to get involved and to uh, respond to that survey. This community engagement will help capture your concerns and your hopes for the future of our lakes. Public buy-in, input, and support will be key to advancing projects and ensuring the right timeline and budgets are assigned to each area. In addition to the compact, Clean Lakes Alliance will hopefully ramp up the volunteer days, public events, and other activities where we actually gather at a lake. That'll be fun, that'll be new, and it'll get us out of our houses. But of course, we won't do this until it is safe. But when it is, we know it's important to bring people together when we can so everybody can recognize the lakes are the center of the community. Finally, I'm excited we have new business members joining Clean Lakes Alliance Community Board. At Aligned Energy, we realize the importance of the lakes in our community, and it is inspiring to see more businesses are joining us in protecting and improving these large natural resources. But before we go, I'm going to hand it back to James to give us one final bit of information on helping our lakes. Thank you, Jim. Um, you know, again, this is a, that same picture um, of, the, of the downtown, uh, Lake Mendota is, is on the left, but you can really see wherever you are in Madison, the lakes do have an impact. Uh, today, the Clean Lakes Alliance is getting ready to launch our 2021 annual campaign. And really thankful for all the donors who have donated in the past, those people who've given foundational support to the organization, um, and those people who donated even at the end of the year. We had a big swell of, of donations, uh, highly irregular, at least for us, at, at the end of the year, uh, this past year. Um, and we are very thankful for those donors who are attending today's presentation. Thank you, everyone. I know some of you even donated uh, uh, at the beginning of this year uh, since uh, January 1st. We're lucky enough to have some great support during the very difficult 2020, but like many nonprofits, we didn't quite meet our fundraising goal. That's why we're hoping to get off the 21 strong. The dollars that we raised today are so that we can do our work this spring and summer. If you donated a lake partner last year, we're hoping you can renew your donation so we can fund important lake improvement projects like educational partnership with the kids. You can see that going on there on the right. Uh, lake forecast monitoring. Um, and that gives latest all reports. Our restoration pro project in partnership with the county and uh, Alliant Energy uh, and the Friends of Present Branch. As you can see on the screen, we have an, an aggressive goal. Uh, this is our stretch goal to raise 1.1 million. One of the things that the strength of Clean Lakes Alliance and goes to our mission is that we continuously build a partnership of rural and urban individuals and companies, sponsorships, grants, businesses. And you can see that reflected here by that pie chart. You can see that we just don't depend on grants. We just don't depend on individuals or corporations. It's really to make a true cultural change for our lakes. You need these all coming together. And we're pretty excited that you have all donated in the past to make a diverse resource space for us to do our work. Uh, all of that money stays here locally in Madison to improve a resource. A lot of us rediscovered this year while we all stayed closer to home during the pandemic, maybe going out to a park that you haven't gone out to before, maybe going to Picnic Point, uh, checking out a stream, or even one of the local ponds that feed into the lakes. Um, I want to thank all of our speakers this morning and congratulate our five-year monitors and community awards uh, one more time. Thank you very much. Your, your dedication and, and passion to the organization is truly our mission and we're truly proud to have that. Um, you know, the, this is my favorite thing coming up. 
Uh, we hope to promote this wide and far love in the lakes. Uh, Justin, who is a former uh, intern at Clean Lakes Alliance, gave this presentation a couple years ago. He's going to start up his game again. But it's how different species, plants, and uh, and other things actually make love and make new little fishies and new little plants. So we're really excited to have that. Uh, it'll be near Valentine's Day on February 10th. Um, and thank you again. I also like to thank our, our sponsors, especially First Weber, Johnson Financial Group, National Guardian Life, The Edgewater, UW Extension, Lakes, and UW Nelson, Nelson Institute. I'd also like to do a little shout out for our team here at Clean Lakes Alliance. Um, it, it was a big year. We, uh, just like everybody else, we had the pivot. Um, some programs grew, our, our Loop the Lake grew significantly uh, virtually. Um, we got more individual donors. We were able to reach more people through uh, social media. Thank you, Karn and Adam. Uh, updates to our website. Um, you know, being able to respond and, and change only comes from your support uh, for those who, who are watching uh, today. Um, it's a nice picture of somebody uh, surfboarding out there on Lake Monona. Uh, for, this is a vantage point from Oldbrook Park. He's, he's enjoying the day. And I also hope you enjoying the day and get out there and enjoy those frozen lakes. Thank you very much.